back, I'm Tedward, and in collaboration with the Bond Group, we're driving a 1963 Aston Martin DB4 Series 5. This car is the coolest, mostly because it's 12 VIN numbers off of the James Bond car. A lot of people think that first James Bond car was a DB5. It was actually a Series 5 DB4, like so. This is the longer wheelbase version. We've got a 3.7 liter straight six that looks absolutely gorgeous, and this exact car was actually the example used at the New York Auto Show in 1963 to show off the DB4. And when we get under the hood, you'll notice they've dressed it up with quite a bit of chrome. Not that common on these vehicles, but inside, first you gotta hear this door. Very satisfying. Inside, gorgeous, gorgeous chrome bezels on all of the gauges. This wheel is incredible. And the oddest thing about this wheel is the fact that the 12 o'clock position is ha, has this bar on it. Typically you think of a three spoke wheel and it's down like a Momo, like we'd see on my Porsche. But no, this is a little strange, a little bit interesting to get used to. We've got a four speed manual gearbox, of course, and this sounds absolutely outrageous. The interior color is this really nice blue leather with the light colored roof. And if we fold this forward, jump over to the back, we can see these very classy ashtrays. So you'd have your nice uh, smoker friends in the back. And these rear windows, this rear glass pops out for ventilation. Very nice, especially if you're smoking in the back of it. If you're curious how to pop the fuel filler, it's right here. That's the fuel filler right there. In typical Aston Martin fashion, the e-brake is on the left side and to release, you just pull up and it comes down to engage. We use the button. I'll show you that when we get driving. But let's jump under the hood. We've got to go over to the right side or as the British would say, the correct side of the vehicle. And right here, that's how we release the hood. If you want to check out the glove box, you just pull and push. Under the hood, this is where things get interesting. And we have two hood props, so they're quite warm right now. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna lose my fingerprints. I guess I could steal things after this. We'll come around and put the hood prop up on the driver's side or the wrong driver's side, I suppose. And under here, we've got our straight six, 3.7 liter naturally aspirated monster. And unlike the DB4 GT, we do not have a twin plug setup. There is one plug per cylinder. Before we get driving, it's fun to just look at this thing. I mean, it does sound incredible, but with the wire spoke wheels and the knockoffs, it's outrageous. One thing, one thing you've gotta be very cautious about when you open these, or I should say when you close these, this is on a spring and it sits up very nicely. In here, you can see we've got the original instruction book, we've got a workshop manual and a parts book, and some extra carpeting, and even platinum paint. But when you close this, it wants to slam shut very quickly, so you have to be very cautious or else it's going to take your fingers off. So very carefully, there we go. Let's start it up and go for a little drive. We've got two keys. I think one of them is for the lock. One of them is for the ignition. Only this one seems to turn this. But anyway, we'll clutch in. The car's already fairly warm, so we do not need to choke it. We'll just give it a little bit of gas, make sure we've got neutral. Hear that fuel pump going, a little bit of throttle. Sounds absolutely outrageous on the startup. We'll get these windows down. Earmuffs on so you don't get the wind noise. With these old cars, I never really trust that first gear if it does have a synchro. Uh, so I usually go back a little bit in a second and then it glides right into first. This is our e-brake. To release the e-brake on an old Aston Martin, you just pull up and down. There it is. through an office park in a 63 DB4. Very strange. Oh, nice brakes. It's always good to drive a classic with good brakes, especially when they've got a little bit of power. This one's not slow. but the car has so much torque that 
you know, around town you find yourself very happily in second and third gear without feeling like you're straining the engine or anything like that. And it'll, it'll dig itself out of a hole. It doesn't bog down too bad down low, which is really impressive. Anybody complaining that oh he's he's not pushing the car come on bring it to redline uh, you got to remember this is like a you know seven hundred fifty to eight hundred thousand dollar vehicle at this point and not only that it's incredibly collectible and and people care about it especially as the James Bond car so it's really inappropriate for me to be out just like whipping on something that is completely irreplaceable, especially as the as the New York Auto Show showpiece vehicle. It's incredible. It is super easy to drive. I, I didn't anticipate this to be this easy to drive. In fact, I actually think the 85 Vantage is a little trickier to get around than this. This really feels natural. There's something very, very mechanical and linear and everything's great. We've got mirrors mounted on the fenders, which is kind of fun, but a little unnatural. But I guess actually, you know, you don't have to take your eyes that far off the road to see what you need to see. You just gotta be cautious because this road is a little beat up. Thing is, 1960s cars were driving on 1960s roads. They were used to being a little beat up. It's kind of nice when you drive these cars because even on today's kind of crummy roads, as long as you don't hit any big potholes, they handle great. They're, they're, they were used to kind of hitting a few bumps and lumps along the way. I mean, heck, I bet some of these were just ripping down dirt roads back in its day. Keeping my eye on all of our temperatures and pressures, oil temps looking good, water temp is what I'm most concerned about, but I haven't seen anything that's scary. This is great. I mean. It's not because of the car, it's because of me. I don't know the car. So, you know, when you're bonding with a new vehicle, especially a vintage vehicle, you need to have respect for what it may or may not do or what it may or may not like. But fortunately, a lot of these old vehicles, they have the gauges you want as a modern driver. Like, I love to be able to see my oil pressure and my temperature of both water and oil. That's nice because otherwise, you feel a little disconnected and it can be scary because you're not totally certain what's going on. This at least gives you a heads up. If something were to go wrong, you might catch it early. I'm actually convinced my GoPro will overheat long before the Aston Martin does. in the first man that's what you want you want your old gearbox to roll right in the first gear please don't do it you're nuts man but listen to this as you roll into the throttle Fantastic. Easy to rev match into the next gear. So cool. I wonder if these people have ever seen a DB4 pull into a gas station next to them before. This is a heck of an experience. I'm going to pull up here because I don't want that guy's door to ding me. ultimate gas station flex.
guys, that is the DB4 Series 5. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. Thank you to the Bond Group for this incredible opportunity. Thank you guys for supporting the Patreon. I'll see you in the next one.